I'm Steve Lockard, Superintendent for Carroll County Public Schools, and this is Report Card on Education. I'm pleased to be joined this week by Cindy McCabe. Cindy is our Chief of Schools, and we'll get into a little bit about that position and learn a little bit more from Cindy as we go. So welcome, Cindy. Thank you. Glad to be here. Glad to have you with us. So for our listeners, last year we saw um, several retirements in the system, and as we finalized work of our strategic plan. We looked at the opportunity to sort of re-image, repurpose, reprioritize many of our existing positions. So this position actually didn't exist previously. However, we utilized our existing positions. We didn't add any additional positions. We just utilized what we had and said, hey, what's the priority and the focus of our work moving forward? How is that tied to the plans that we've made? And how can we best support our schools, and our students. And so with that was born the chief of schools position. It's one of three chiefs in Carroll County Public Schools. Cindy has responsibility for all of our elementary, middle, and high schools, among other areas of the school system. So we're going to learn a little bit about that and some of the things underway with Cindy and uh, her role. So let's talk about it. You're in your first few months in this role. You're no stranger to the system. You've been here for several years in a couple different capacities as a director of elementary schools, as a principal in our system. So let's talk about your first few months and what your focus for the year is going to be. So in the first few months and really for this school year, my focus is gaining a deeper understanding of secondary schools. So I'm spending a lot of time with, in middle schools and high schools, getting to know those administrators better, getting to know the programs there better, as well as athletics. Athletics is another area that I'm responsible for, and I am enjoying working with uh, Eric King, the director of high schools, and Michael Duffy, the supervisor of athletics. We have great athletic programs in Carroll County, and it's really been a pleasure getting to know those programs, the athletic directors and the coaches. Another focus of mine is just ensuring that we have a seamless program from pre-K through 12. So looking at the programs at each of those levels, making sure that the transitions from elementary, middle, and middle to high are smooth, and that we're all speaking the same language uh, for our students and our parents. And then thirdly, I'm really looking at our academic achievement and looking at ways that we can increase that and work together for the betterment of our students. Well, I appreciate the focal points that you shared, in particular that seamless transition between schools. You know, we have certainly three different levels, elementary, middle, and high, but we're one school system. Um, And those shouldn't be isolated. There should be that seamless kind of transition, that collaboration amongst schools as, as kids transition and matriculate through our school system. I know you're a strong instructional leader. Look at the work that's happened over the last uh, many years in our elementary schools with your leadership there. And so I'm excited to have you in this role, bringing that same focus of instructional leadership to the entire system. Let's talk about some new initiatives going on in schools. What's in the works this year in Carroll County Public Schools? Well, uh, two exciting things that are going on. One is that we are in the process of renovating our Career and Technology Center, and that has been in the works and in the planning stages for a long time, and a lot of people have worked together to make sure that the space that we're renovating is what we need, what our students need, and I think everybody's really excited about that. Another great thing we have in the works right now is Uh, We know that we're going to have a new East Middle School, and while we don't know where the building will be at this point, we do know that we will have a replacement East Middle. So our board is working with all of us in the county to make sure that the school is what we need it to be for our students. So we've also increased our dual enrollment opportunities this year for students. We have a great connection and partnership with Carroll Community College, and we've been working with them to make sure that our students have many opportunities for dual enrollment. And in the past, our students have gone over to the college to take their courses there. This year, it's exciting because not only do we have opportunities for students to go to campus to take dual enrollment classes, 
but we also have dual enrollment opportunities within our students' home high schools as well. We're looking to continue to increase that program and make more courses available for our students. We also have some more technology happening in our classrooms. Last year and this year, our schools were able to procure more laptops, and those have been being used in the classrooms with students on a daily basis, and they've been integrated into the regular curriculum and instruction that's going on. And really what we've been doing is working with our principals and teachers to strengthen the first pass instruction that our students are getting in all classrooms. I know many times we hear a lot about the intervention opportunities that our students have, and we are very proud of the interventions that we offer in order to get students back on track but we're also looking at really strengthening the first pass instruction that our students are receiving so that there is less of a need for the intervention services that sometimes we see. Very good. Now, just a couple of weeks ago, I talked with folks from Tawnytown Elementary School, Christy Farver, uh, principal there, as well as her reading specialist, members of the school improvement team, and they gave us a real glimpse into the school improvement process at Tawnytown Elementary. What's new in the area of school improvement across Carroll County Public Schools? I think one of the great ways we're moving forward with student achievement is in total alignment of school and school system plans. We've worked very hard to create a strategic plan for Carroll County Public Schools and that plan is driving <clears throat> everything else we do in the system regarding student achievement. So as schools and school teams develop their school improvement plans. They're using the strategic plan goals to set their priorities and to determine whether they meet with success. Then the principals and the teachers are actually using those goals in order to set their own student learning goals. So um, never, I think, has there been a time in our system that we have been in the total and complete alignment that we're in right now. Also, we are using the text, The Four Disciplines of Execution by Covey to really take a look at our school improvement planning and the execution of those plans. I think it's a lot easier for any organization to write their plan, to develop their plan. I think it's a very different thing to execute on that plan. So that text is helping us get beyond the whirlwind or the busyness of every day to focus on the important things that we need to focus on in our plans. And it's also helping us to develop compelling scoreboards and lead and lag data so that we're not waiting until the last minute to see are we going to make our goals or not. No, that's that's a, really important. That's great work, and, and I appreciate you bringing in that point. A lot of times when people are just watching our board meetings or, you know, just a couple weeks ago we had a Pillar 1 update for the entire system. Some great news there to celebrate, but also places that we need to focus on and show improvement. But I think one thing that maybe some folks don't realize is the amount of accountability that's going on at individual school levels. Sure, we're, we're very interested in how our system as a whole performs, but that's as good as all those collective parts. And so folks like you and your role, your directors who are providing that oversight to the accountability that happens each and every day in our schools, and you, you shared a little glimpse of some of the work that's going on there. I know it's much more involved and certainly uh, very purposeful in helping guide schools to their achievement goals as well. So we've talked about this several times in community town halls and, and meetings that I've had uh, with the public, with folks from higher ed, with our business leaders. I'm always interested in hearing from them about how do we best prepare kids to be successful once they leave us what is it that you're looking for, either folks in higher ed or folks in the business world or community members or whoever it might be? What are some of those skills or attributes beyond just, hey, this, this student has mastered the content or beyond just this really good SAT score? All important components, but what are some of those other attributes that people think are important? It's really important for us to ask that question because I think we need to be preparing students for success 
And so we need to ask the question, what are the attributes or skills that students should possess? What do you think some of those things are? So some of the things that we think are important based on the feedback we've gotten and based on just the 21st century skills that we know our students need in the workplace are things like collaboration. Our students need to be able to collaborate with one another on projects, on problem solving kinds of opportunities so that they know how to work through a problem together and also work through with folks who may be different than them or may have different ideas than they do. We hear all the time that that is imperative for any business or organization for their employees. We're also working with our students on improving their perseverance. Solving problems isn't always a quick, easy, painless process. And so we're working with our students so that they can feel more comfortable during the times that they feel challenged and frustrated in a problem-solving situation. Oftentimes, if they persevere through some of that frustration, they do get to an answer that they're looking for. And then we also look for creativity and flexibility. We want them to be able to bloom and blossom not only in reading, math, and core content areas, but we want them to use their creativity in those areas as well as the arts and sciences in order to solve problems and create things that businesses need, that other organizations need. That real world kind of situation seems to really motivate our students. Those are all things I heard in the various places uh, throughout the course of the last year. Like I said, content's important, aptitude, all those components are really important. But we need to make sure then that we're providing some of these opportunities for students to demonstrate or practice or apply some of the things like collaboration, problem solving, flexible thinking, perseverance, creativity. As somebody who hires employees, I'm also looking for those things because as we innovate and continue to iterate our system moving forward for continuous improvement, we need people who not only just know the content, but also can motivate students and provide opportunities for them to be creative and demonstrate those problem solving and critical thinking skills. Other pieces I heard to that were good communicators. It's very important for our students to be able to not only orally communicate in written form, as well as electronic communication, teaching students about digital citizenship and using technology to effectively either demonstrate or produce or communicate their knowledge. The other piece is being a good citizen, being life ready, being an ethical citizen and member of the community. Well, Cindy, I appreciate you spending a little bit of time with us today and sharing some of your insights and the great work that's happening in Carroll County Public Schools. We have a lot to be proud of. You really just scratched the surface of the things that are going on in your neck of the woods in Carroll County Public Schools. And again, I'm very glad uh, you're in this role serving our system in this capacity. Once again, uh, this week our guest has been our Chief of Schools, Cindy McCabe. I'm Steve Lockard, Superintendent for Carroll County Public Schools, and this has been Report Card on Education.